Alright guys, we've got another edition of Trey Investigates Mysterious Crap and more likely than not, Sucks the Imagination and Happiness from the World, or whatever this series is called. I don't know, we're working on the title. Today, we got a topic I wanted to do a video on for a while. As I have said before, I was once a creationist, a pretty strong believer for a while, in fact. And I strongly remember the time when I used to be convinced by this sort of stuff. And I can't tell you how strangely empowering it is to confront my past as a more mature individual and hopefully help educate others that were similar to me. Well, anyways, this time, we are tackling the Ica Stones, probably the most famous of the ancient ancient and massive quotes, artifacts that supposedly supports everything from young earth creationism, slash non-avian dinosaur and man coexistence, to ancient astronauts, to pre-Columbian transatlantic crossings. Even outside the conspiracy cryptid paranormal circles, a significant amount of people have heard of these things. The story goes that in the 1960s, a collection of stones were discovered in a secret tunnel by a farmer by the name of Basilio Asucha, near the small town of Ica, Peru. These stones, made of andesite, were allegedly ancient and engraved with mysterious images. Basilio, as well as a few other locals, sold the stones to tourists, claiming they were authentic artifacts. Eventually, in 1966, a doctor by the name of Javier Cabrera Darquia was given one of these stones on his birthday as a gift from none other than Basilio Asucha. Javier was astonished to find the image engraved on the stones was a fish, not just any ordinary fish, an extinct one. Intrigued, Javier further investigated the stone's origin by asking Basilio to show him the cave where he had found them. Allegedly, Javier was taken to the cave and allegedly discovered it was filled up to 100,000 similar stones which he decided to leave undisturbed. He continued to purchase thousands of stones from his local suppliers like Basilio and Irma Gutierrez. By the 1970s, Javier had amassed somewhere around 11,000 engraved stones. He eventually abandoned his medical career in Lima and went straight up Stanford Pines by deciding to build his own mysterious shack in Ica, called Museo de Piedras Cuadapas, or Engraved Stone Museum, in 1996, putting his massive collection on display for local tourists to see. What Javier and most other people found most interesting about the stones were the images they depicted. Many stones depict very anachronistic subjects, from humans living alongside extinct dinosaurs like tyrannosaurs, sauropods, and ceratopsids, in some circumstances riding them like straight out of the Flintstones, and advanced pre-Columbian technology like telescopes, heart transplants, brain transplants, and spacecraft. Javier would later publish a book containing his theories about the stone's meaning in The Message of the Ingrained Stones of Ica. Javier believed the stones to be authentic, created by an ancient Peruvian civilization that one million years ago traveled from a far-off planet to Earth and created mankind? Hey, somebody's been reading Lovecraft. Since then, the stones achieved great fame and have attracted the interests of very conspiracy theory pseudoscience groups, from the ancient astronaut theorists like this guy to young Earth creationists. The ancient astronaut theorists believing they are evidence of alien and human contact. The creationists believing they are evidence of recent human and dinosaur coexistence and that the Earth is 6,000 to 10,000 years old instead of the 4.4 billion year age accepted by scientists. Creationists often attribute them to actual Native American civilizations like the Incans, Nazca culture, etc., while ancient astronauts attribute them to just an unknown alien-like culture. So the big question remains, are the stones authentic? And do they prove such claims? Well, the short answer is... Nope. The stones are obviously hoaxes and forges created very recently, and I feel inclined to expose them for the petty frauds they are. First of all, let's just look at what the stones depict. As said before, engraved on the stones are a variety of things, from the ordinary to absurd. I mean, come on. However, the one that is probably the most important to focus on is the absurd, so let's just get down to business. The depictions of extinct animals and humans living together are, upon closer inspection, extremely questionable and unconvincing. The dinosaurs and other paleofauna depicted are highly outdated and seem to be most accurate to dinosaur depictions at the time of the stone's discovery, and not actually realistic depictions of how they actually looked. For example, the theropods depicted, such as T-Rex, drag their tails like kangaroos, stand straight up like men, and are completely featherless, which was accurate to what was known at the time in the 1960s and commonly depicted as such in contemporary artwork, but is in fact extremely far from the truth. Modern evidence clearly shows that theropods like T-Rex stood horizontally, likely possessed some covering of feathers, and had tails that stuck straight out. The sauropods depicted are also equally wrong. The long-necked dinos illustrated on the stones are sluggish, sprawling lizards common of paleoart depictions of the time but just like T-Rex depictions, couldn't be further from the truth. Basically every extinct animal depicted on the stone suffers from this weakness. The stegosaurs drag their tails on the ground, something that would be impossible in accordance to their anatomy. 
Humans are seen riding pterosaurs, something that would be impossible, not just because the two never coexisted, but because a pterosaur could never even support such weight. It's additionally strange that all the animals depicted are ones that we know didn't live in South America, even in life. T-Rex, Triceratops, and Stegosaurs all lived in North America and not South America. Funny that the stones only depict dinosaurs and extinct animals known to paleontologists prior to the time of their discovery, and in accordance to only what was known about them at that time. Funny that you'll never see a stone predict future scientific discoveries about dinosaurs. How come we've never seen a bird-like dromaeosaur covered in feathers completely unknown at the time? Or a depiction of macrochenia, or ground sloths, or terror birds, or carnotaurus, which actually lived in prehistoric South America, and were still either undiscovered or obscure to the public eye, and definitely would be completely unknown to some Peruvian farmer, unlike the very popular and widely known dinosaurs depicted. You know how impressive that would be? It would pretty decisively prove their authenticity, but nope. What a curious observation that these illustrations, supposedly made directly from living, breathing animals, have so many flaws and errors. One might be inclined to think that these stones were created at a specific time when knowledge about these creatures was limited, like the 1960s, instead of being based from reality. I've seen creationists defend the stones by saying they are realistic depictions of prehistoric animals and thus prove ancient Native Americans lived alongside dinosaurs, and I can't stress how far this is from the truth. Just like what I have discovered with the Jonathan Whitcombs, Ropin, and Nessie, time is a fraud's worst enemy. Because as new discoveries are made and what was once accepted today might be proven wrong tomorrow, imposters with incorrect claims of authenticity stick out like a sore thumb, because the real truth stays consistent always. Facts always endure with new discoveries, while frauds always lag behind and are exposed. Funny thing, as I was researching this video, I came across one stone which I found oddly familiar. The description I found accompanied the image said it's a bird man, but I discovered it was an outright plagiarism of Eliphas Levi, Sabbatic Goat, or Baphomet. An occultist icon, although commonly associated with Satanism, has a significant deeper philosophical meaning about duality and balance. The illustration this engraving was very clearly copied off was a drawing by Levi in the mid-1800s, in France. The fact is, on this stone reveals its obvious recent creation, or I guess Baphomet also really existed living alongside the ancient Peruvians and dinosaurs. I think one stone depicts a straight-up dragon or cockatrice, and I don't even think I need to say anything about that. The technological advancements depicted on the stones are equally ridiculous, as they suggest this civilization capable of space travel will still use horse-drawn carts. Again, funny there's no evidence of horses in the New World until the Europeans brought them over there. Sure, equids once existed in the Americas, and the very first Native Americans would have seen them, but this was during the Ice Age 10,000 years ago. And in fact, by the time any Native American culture created anything close to a civilization, none of them have ever seen a horse, and consequently didn't have a word for them in their language, often having to revert to such mysterious beasts to the closest things they knew, like big dogs, elk dogs, and seven dogs, referring to the way each animal could pool. Anyways, we found no evidence of horses in the Americas later than 10,000 BCE, and we additionally have found no evidence of horse-drawn carriages or chariots or anything like that, what is depicted on the stones. This depiction is just as ridiculous as the dinosaurs when you think about it. Moving on to the strange depictions of medical procedures, the Incans, the culture I've seen many creationists try to attribute these stones to, were in fact great medical professionals. Archaeological evidence shows they engaged in cranial surgeries called trepanations, which treated brain injuries without anesthetic and antibiotics, with an extremely high success rate of 90%. However, the medical procedures depicted on the stones go far beyond any that the Ankins were capable of. Heart, much less brain surgery, would have required great knowledge of blood types, anesthesia, and sterile working conditions, something the Native Americans were clearly unaware of. To say otherwise, we need external evidence, something we just don't have. The biggest problem is the lack of corroborating evidence. If an advanced Native American civilization existed, where are their remains? Where are their cities? How come we have never discovered their telescopes or fresh dinosaur bones next to humans? How come no other much more authenticated writings, artworks, and cultures ever talked about them and their reptilian steeds? We have found zero evidence of any of these absurd things happening at South the Stones themselves. It's ridiculous that the scenes illustrated on the Stones are never referenced by any other outside source. Normally in archaeology, and, and in really any scientific field, you are able to cross-confirm certain events, cultures, etc. with one another to corroborate their stories. However, the dinosaurs, spacecraft, and horses are only found on the stones, and nowhere else. It's as if the supposed culture that created them never existed. Additionally, the styles used on these stones are very uncharacteristic of many of these ancient cultures, and a simple comparison shows techniques abnormal to these cultures. For example, the three-dimensional perspective on a flat 2D background is basically unheard of in any ancient Native American artwork. 
I could probably go on and on about the countless historical, artistic, and scientific inaccuracies that expose the stones as the anachronistic frauds they are, but I don't have to, because all that is nothing compared to the dubious backstory surrounding the stones when we take an in-depth look at the good old doctor and his stone suppliers. Now at this point, you, the viewer, might be wondering why can't we just solve this dumb stone debate with a simple dating? Well, the problem is something like carbon dating only works with objects that contain organic material, like bone, not stones. Instead, to know the stone's true origin, we'd have to examine their place of origin. The secret tunnel. The only problem is that the secret tunnel is well secret. Neither Javier nor Basilio ever identified the location of the cave, in which they apparently discovered hundreds of thousands of stones, and it might as well not even exist due to the lack of any corroborating evidence in the fact that both Javier and Basilio have a track record of being unreliable. Going back to what apparently ignited this story in the first place, the stone that Javier claimed to have identified an extinct fish on remains suspicious. Javier never specified what type of fish it was, when the specific species of fish became extinct, and most importantly, how he came to the conclusion it could only be this certain type of fish. How does a Peruvian medical doctor during the 1960s even know anything about identifying extinct prehistoric fish from highly simplistic and undetailed stones anyway? Just like the secret tunnel, the whole thing must remain ambiguous, with as little information being given as possible. Basilio Sucha, the frickin' guy who claimed to have discovered all the stones in the first place, is worse. In 1973, during the interview with the Ancient Aliens guy, no, sadly not him, the other one, Eric Von Daniken, Asucha admitted to faking the stones. Furthermore, he was arrested by the Peruvian police for illegally selling archaeological artifacts and threatened with imprisonment. Asucha, again, under pressure, admitted them to being hoaxes. In 1975, he and another Ica farmer, Irma, again confirmed the story that the two of them forged the stones, copying images of dinosaurs from textbooks, magazines, and comic books at the time. A few pictures have been taken of Asucha holding some of these direct inspirations of the stones, some of them looking identical to the end result. However, to make things needlessly more complicated, Asucha recanted his entire forging story, saying the stones were now authentic again, and he only said what he said earlier because he was afraid of getting in trouble. But wait, there's more. In 1977, in a BBC documentary, Pathway to the Gods, featured, guess who? No, I really want you to guess. Well, none other than Asucha, again, this time giving an in-depth demonstration how he faked the stones by using a dentist drill and then aging them by baking them in cow dung. On another occasion, he said he hoaxes the stones because making these stones is easier than farming the land. He continued to sell similar stones and trinkets to tourists up until his death, which I believe was in 2012. At this point, it's rather clear that the stones are quite clearly frauds. The story reeks of deceptions, and it's rather obvious that both Javier and Asucha have swindled some people into believing the craziest notions just for a quick buck, or, um, uh... Soul. Tourist traps like this where locals will prey on unaware tourists and adventure seekers are common all throughout the world, and it's just a shame they can sometimes have such a negative impact as to play into some people's beliefs that are simply not true. Javier died in 2001, but his, uh, museum is still open and I'm pretty sure is run by his daughter. You can bet the entire Ica stone phenomenon will continue to be held up as evidence by the pseudoscience friend groups, but for the people who want to look solely at the evidence and the facts, I think it's safe to say that the Ica stones have been thoroughly debunked as hoaxes created recently and merely to capitalize on people's compulsion to believe in fantastical things that are just not true. Everything from the anachronistic and outdated images on the stones, to the suspicious origin, to the propagators of the stones themselves, support this conclusion. And I hope people can come to accept this very obvious fact and cease to be fooled by this decade-old ruse. Case closed. This video has been a collaboration between Trey the Explainer and Stated Clearly. Let my friend John from over there take it away. Hello, John Perry here. Over at the Stated Clearly channel, you can watch short, information-packed animations on genetics, evolution, and the origin of life. They're perfect for quickly brushing up on the science, and they're friendly enough to share with those that might be hostile towards evolution or don't yet accept the science. Working with Trey, I've recently started a new series of animations on dinosaurs, so go check that out. See you guys next time. Da -da. Don't fall in love with the traveling girl. She'll leave